situated on the banks of the River Seine, Rouen is Normandy's historic, artistic and cultural capital. Its stunning Notre Dame de Rouen inspired artists like Claude Monet and somewhat morbidly, the heart of King Richard the Lionheart is held in a tomb within its walls. Other points of interest about Rouen are Edward IV, famous for War of the Roses, ex-French president François Hollande, uh, Le Bon winner Philippe Antissala, and F1 driver Pierre Gasly were all born here in Rouen. And it's also home to one of Europe's oldest working clocks, Le Gros Hologue. I think it's fair to say that Rouen's had its fair share of famous names and faces and also famous events. But I think one of its more famous figures would be Joan of Arc. And actually, Joan of Arc met her demise here back in 1431 in the Vieux Marché here in Rouen just behind me. It's also been suggested that her body was burnt three times and it was essentially to make sure that there was nothing left of her there were no mementos that people could take and keep and her ashes were simply cast into the Seine. At the time Joan may have been hailed as a, a hero of France but I do have to wonder if she realized that she was on her road to Rouen. I'm really sorry it's been a really long day. So our 1952 Michelin Guide, as I mentioned earlier, lists out you know, cathedrals, churches, museums, curiosities, really. And it's perhaps no surprise that Victor Hugo coined the phrase, City of a Thousand Spires. But we've come to Rouen for something else, something a bit different, but also something that the Michelin Guide would become famous for. And that, of course, is a restaurant. In fact, a restaurant that is actually just a stone's throw away from the Vieux Marché here. And the main reason we brought our guide with us really is because we thought it'd be interesting to see whether any of the establishments listed in here back in 1952 were actually still going strong today. And we discovered that not only was the answer yes, but in the case of our next location, it's been serving its community far longer than that. Established in 1345, La Caronne is described as France's oldest auberge or inn, having beautiful Normandy decor and serving classical Normandy cuisine. In all honesty, our guide doesn't really give La Caronne a particularly gushing recommendation, but it does seem to be a really popular place, very popular with locals and honestly has a list of celebrity diners that's as long as my arm. So it's had the likes of Salvador Dali, Bridget Bardot, Sophia Loren, Alec Guinness. Other political people have also dined here that are on the, that list of famous people. So with a list of diners like that, we couldn't possibly leave Rouen without going to see what all the fuss was about. With our lunch stop done, it was time to leave Rouen and hit the road for the next 130 mile run to Le Mans.
after a few hours on the road, we arrived at Le Mans, and with such a long day behind us, it was time for a well-earned rest. Ready to check out the sights tomorrow. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people descend on Le Mans for the 24-hour road race. But there is more to the city than just the race. In fact, Le Mans is called the City of Art and is home to some of France's largest cathedrals, such as the one behind me, Saint-Julien. This cathedral actually played host to the wedding of Geoffrey Plantagenet to Matilda, who was the granddaughter of William the Conqueror. And their grandson would go on to become one of England's most famous kings, Richard the Lionheart. More recently, Le Mans is home to racing driver and 24-hour regular Sebastian Bourdais, who first entered the race aged just 20 in a Porsche 911 GT2. Famed British actor and bona fide national treasure David Jason is also said to have lived here in Le Mans upon occasion. Here in the historic quarter, you can really get a sense of this medieval city and its 300 years of Plantagenet rule. It roughly follows the line of the original Gallo-Roman walls, with plenty of narrow streets to explore. Dating from the 14th to 16th centuries, the stone and columbage buildings now house numerous bars, restaurants, boutiques and even a small theatre, so there are plenty of places to while away the hours, or just rest your weary feet from all the walking. And if all that's not enough, every evening through the summer, the city plays host to La Nuit de Chimère, when every night, the city's famous landmarks are lit up with artistic projections. With our visit to Le Mans coming to an end, it was time to get back on the road for the next part of our journey. Though, we do have a small detour to make along the way. <laughs> 